it's a bit different today on Backchat, obviously powered by Fleet Network. Uh, interestingly, Scoey and I are both in Melbourne, but not together. Where are you right now? Right. I'm in uh, the deep, darkest point of my mind, but I'm also in a <laughs> hotel in South Yarra. I'm pretty hungover, let's be honest. Um, yep. Big game, grand final yesterday. I'm in, I'm in the Overlow uh, Speak Easy Bar, um, would you believe, down in South okay. Yarra. And uh, so if you can hear a bit of some tunes in the background, uh, enjoy those. How are you? Yeah, Where are you? I'm, I'm in Richmond, uh, not Virginia, Richmond. Uh, oh, Victoria. fuck, I thought you might have been. Yeah, I thought you might have been. Yeah. <laughs> we, uh, I'm staying in, a, in someone's house, which is, they very generously donated to me for the weekend. Um, wow, big dog. I did have, yeah, big dog. I did, um, I did have a rough start, though. I got here, so we, we flew in together <laughs> at like, Got in at like eight, 11 o'clock, 11.30. Yeah. Got to the house and... Um, by yourself. I immediately, yeah, by myself. Um, immediately locked myself out within with being here within like five minutes. Put my bag down. I wanted to go get some food. Went for a walk. <sighs> what did you do? Just walk out? Just snipping locks that you didn't know you had no keys to? Like It's outrageous behavior yeah. by you. I pushed the button on the door, pulled it closed, thought the key I had would open that lock, and it turns out it didn't. So... Uh, called a locksmith, 24-hour guy, came out in about 15 minutes. Public uh, so holiday. Public holiday, midnight, and he goes, all right, cool, thanks, <laughs> man, that'll be, six, that'll be $600. <laughs> uh, but I stood my ground. I'm pretty proud of myself. I ended up Is paying that right? 250 Yeah, I paid 250 down from 600 I was like, How do you negotiate that? I said, I'm not paying $600. I said, I will... <laughs> I said, there's, I can get a key tomorrow, like someone can drop me off one. I'll, I will literally just wait for the morning and come back. And he's like, no, 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 that's fine. I'll help you out. All right, is this you. pre Is this pre or post yeah, him unlocking? we're standing at the door. No, we're standing at the door. He's got the machine in his hand ready to like let me in the house. And uh, anyways, talked him down for, for about five minutes, got him down to 250 bucks. Wow. Um, I probably could have gone lower as well. He said, all right, tell me how much you think you, you should pay. And I said, 250. And he goes, all right. Fine, eventually we got to that. But I probably could have said 150. That's a rogue operation, just like throwing numbers around. (laughs) The the thing is, he had this little machine. He literally had punched it into the door handle, and within 20 seconds, I was in the door. Like, it took me no time at all. Wow. But the call out, obviously, midnight. Uh, So, yeah, we are in Melbourne. Today's episode, uh, we are going to flick to the Shelter Footy cast. We're doing it for you. We're already just, like, linking it up. You don't have to go across another channel or anything. We're going to do that. Because Hammer and Skeet... Will do a good job of reviewing the game. Powered by but, Fleet Network. Powered by Fleet Network. Yeah, of course. Powered by, Powered Fleet, by Fleet Network. Network. I was with Frank Agostino yesterday. Were you? Yeah, Frank Agostino, Fleet Network. I was with a great man here in Melbourne um, for a little bit. Did yeah, you, I actually you got a phone call. Didn't get us into like a corporate suite or something. Well, he was there. That's where he was. Yeah, so he got himself in clearly. Um, but uh, yeah, I sort of mentioned that. Powered by Fleet Network. So yeah, we are just having a bit of a brief debrief. Uh, off the back of the grand finals, uh, or not? Will Schofield, but maybe. Uh, oh, you're back. Uh, uh, oh, is that what we're doing? We're having a day break on the on the grand final. Yeah, yeah. So tell me, you went to the game. What, what was it like? I've, I've never been to a grand final. You were there as. Is this the first one you've been to since? Since playing? No, yeah. You went to... Yep. I went to 2021. I called that game in Perth, oh, yeah, yeah. but I haven't. In Perth. The last time I was back change. in the G was 2019. We got knocked out by Geelong, and I got knocked out by Tom Hawkins in the same game. Uh, that was the semi-final at the MCG. I, um, uh, you're in and out. Hello, Dan. You back? I'm back. Yeah. Turn your Wi-Fi off, bro. Um, anyway, uh, 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 yeah. So look, I MCG. Got you a ticket. You didn't want it. You didn't want to pay for it, but you're willing to pay six hundred dollars for a fucking locksmith that <laughs> didn't want to pay your way into the MCG. Um, it was great. It was a great game. I worked a little bit of media beforehand. We did a bit of stuff with Street X, and then we jumped over to the uh, Swan Street. Had some beers on Swan Street. Good atmosphere. You said yeah. you'd never been in Melbourne for Grand Final weekend. It was awesome. Everyone was wearing a Guernsey. Everyone was just up and about, like the. The streets were just heaving. It was great. So I worked a little bit of 6PR, then I ducked across to the members and had a 1,000 beers. Um, I said before the game that 
uh, Collingwood, if it was a close game, Collingwood would win. And if yeah. Brisbane played well, it would be a blowout and Brisbane like, would win easily. I thought Brisbane played pretty well, but Collingwood, I mean, fuck me. You, you actually, for all the bullshit I've given them and, you know, I lent into it a lot on social media and carried on like a bit of a pork chop, you can do nothing but respect the Collingwood footy club. They find a way to win. Just some, oh, there was just so many big moments. The, the quality of footy was grand final footy. Like there was yeah. absolutely amazing goals being kicked the whole day. Uh, great backmanship, like some seriously good defensive efforts. Um, we ended up in the long room. I actually watched the game from the long room. Um, um, you know where, you know, at Lords when all the pompous, uh, yeah. Richard from Bottleworth and, you know, <laughs> yeah. Douglas Quincy fancy on, pants. Yeah. You know where they're all standing? Yeah. Uh, it's the MCC equivalent. So right. it's like right, right, right. traditional area. You've got to have a, a suit, you got to have a jacket and tie to get in there. And, um, and it was good. It was great. Stood up at the bar, the long room, and watched it from there. Spent a bit of time over in the corporate area with a few of our friends from a few different AFL clubs in there. Snuck in there a couple of times. Sat a couple down from Gill and Andrew Dillon and Trevor Nisbet was right there with me. Um, everyone was going for Brisbane. Let me just tell you that right now. Everyone was going for Brizzy. But, fuck, Colin would just get it done. I mean, fuck, mate. There's some amazing yeah. moments, but they're, they're amazing. Where did you watch it from? Uh, I watched it at uh, one of your mates' place, Tim. Shout out to yeah. him. Yeah, shout Absolute out to him. legend. So shout I rock out. up and we've never met. And he's like, man, I got a pie for you. I had a pie. He's had beer ready for me. Uh, we watched the first half and then uh, we walked to a house party and uh, none other than Josh DeLuca there. Um, I don't know who that is. <laughs> past uh, Peel player. I think, he was, I think he was on the Frio list. Wow. Um, f- for a period of time. Played a bit so of a huge scene. Um, big celebrity house party. Yeah, big celebrity house party. It was good. And then I walked home. I thought, I'm just going to go home and have a nap, and then I'll, I'll meet you guys somewhere. And um, went home for a nap, and then I woke up this morning. So, <laughs> What time did you go home for a nap? Like straight after the game. We, I hung out the house for a little bit, and I just said, like, oh, like uh, I'm off. And I, I was like, I was feeling a bit tired. And I was like, I'm not going to last till like the late hours of the night and catch up with you guys if I don't like just at least have a little rest or something. And then, yeah, work up this morning. So- you, would have, you would have loved. So post game, um, hung around in the members, ran into Mitch Brown, former West Coast Eagles. So I had a few more beers with he and his brother. My cousin was in there. It was just a random group of people. We walk out, there's this big bunch of Collingwood supporters singing the song, ch- chucking on Snapchat socials. I saw, yes. <laughs> so me and Mitch Brown have jumped in. I'm like, look, it's Nath Brown because his, his brother, twin twin brother played for Collingwood. And I said, look, I found Nath Brown and we're jumping in there and they think it's fucking Nath Brown. It's Mitch. <laughs> Fuck me, it was funny. Uh, and then we went down to the September Club. You would have liked this. Didn't have tickets. None. Um, roll in, get one ticket off a mate, and he brings it out to me. So I've got a ticket. I go in, I walk in, and I'm like, I'm going to get some. You, you had to get in, you had to have a wristband, and you had to have a neck, like a neck, uh, like a pass. Lanyard. Lanyard. First guy I run in, yeah, Langer. First guy I run into, Jimmy Bartell. So, mate, um, yeah, he said, oh, back chat, love back chat, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, um, so congrats on the Brown medal and grand finals you won in career. I said, mate, I'm trying to get um, trying to get everyone into the, into this joint. He goes, oh, mate, I'm fucking leaving. He had his dad and his missus there. He said, take these. So I've got Jimmy Bartels with Jimmy Bartels' face on it, uh, and his yes. and his partner and his and his dads, and took their wristbands. So then we had three. So right, there was six people I was trying to get in. So we got the three in on those. One of them with Jimmy Bartels' face on it. Uh, so so rat so James came as Jimmy you know James Jimmy's works uh, and the yeah. fact that Jimmy's name is James uh, and then uh, then I started handing them out over a fence over a back alley security area dropping them over fences people running in you had to scan them out to get them back in so people were trying to scan in and they were red and so like someone said oh, I just had a smoke and so you come in and someone said oh, I just been talking to the kids and Alice came a bit later and she was like oh, I just been dropping the kids in a babysitter, like all these stories. Got everyone in. Got everyone in. Every right. single person in. 
Uh, it's just complete free for all in there. There's about ten bars, all you know, all you can drink type areas, and uh, no cost. Uh, no cost. Well, that's yeah, all you can drink for. Yeah, well, it's like a package. It's like a it's like a right, corporate area. Ticket. Yeah, yeah, the people who pay for their fucking tickets and their wristbands, like that's you know, other than people yeah. trying to. Get. Anyway, did all that. Linked up with Luke Shuey. Uh Went home, called at about eleven o'clock. I reckon we finished there. So oh, what do you want to do? You want to go home? So it was just Alex and I at this stage. I said, "No, let's go to the cash." She bought a hundred dollar cash in her hand. <laughs> so we drive to the cash. It's a fairly long drive. Fair bit of traffic. We walk in. I'm absolutely blind, and um, we walk in. We walked around Crown. My feet were killing me. I was trying to get a feed. I was fucking starving. We walked around Crown, which is so fucking big. It's the biggest place ever. We come around this random area and this random part of Crown. And who do we fucking bump into? Who do you think is fucking scourging around the fucking tables of Crown Casino, can barely walk, can barely hold himself up, can barely hold a conversation? Lo and behold, can I guess? Mark Skeeter Reddings is <laughs> yeah, just fucking exactly sweeping the floors of Crown Casino. <laughs> and we, we just like, it couldn't have, there was just no chance in hell we would have bumped into him and we ran into him. <laughs> Said we tried to meet him later, lost him again, uh, had a pretty shit pizza, um, got up about $300 on the tables and then um, burnt it all and walked away $0. Uh, in nice. And that go. was my good grand night. final. That was my grand final while you were asleep. <laughs> I had a good time at the uh, with you, with you. Right? Yeah, yeah, I know you said that, and then you went to bed. And then you went to bed. Yeah. But yeah, I was just responsible, and now I feel great. I feel really, really good today. Great. I've got a haircut. Um, I feel fucking hungover, and uh, I want to go and get in the car and go to Geelong. Yeah, we're going to get to Geelong today. Um, we'll, we'll yes. Today. Um, let's let's just leave it to Hammer and Skeet then. They can do okay. the um, important stuff. Talk about the grand final. Uh, with the Shelby the, footy cast. There was some yeah. simply the best moments, but I think you're going to have to jump on socials to find those moments because you're going to have to have yeah. a bit of a bit of a think about those big moments. I mean, winning the grand final, probably a big moment for Collingwood. Bobby Hill winning the Norm Smith medal, four goals, almost 20 touches. Luke Shuey uh, voted on the Norm Smith medal. He said that was an he interesting did. process. I think he said everyone voted for Bobby Hill, three votes, like... Um, it was sort of a game where there wasn't, like, there wasn't a step. Like, even though he kicked four, it wasn't like he was, you know, out and out best player in the game. So he found that very nerve wracking giving those votes, as I've done before, not the norm, but like votes or anything, it's fucking nerve wracking. Um, so, yeah, super the best moment. I reckon there'll be a couple of them, but make sure you get on socials yep. and check those out. Of course. Um, last thing, shout out to all our sponsors uh, yep. before you, you go across to the Shelter Footy Cast. Uh, Whippersnap Whiskey, Moment River Roasting Co., Blue Vet, Shelter Brewing Co., Leadville Cameras, uh, Swimply, of course, who we just talked about, and Fleet Network. They're driving the podcast for 2023. Mamba Digital. Digital. We love Mamba Digital. They made our website, backchatstudios.com.au. Go and check our fucking merch out, please. Um, Yes. We're about to receive it. It's going to be shipped very shortly, so you want to get on there. It's been pre-sale, actual sale is hitting stores this week. Actual back chat merch. It's bloody unreal. It's everyday wear. There's blue, there's grey, there's some other colours. Fucking exceptional I think, stuff. I think there's a really small amount of... Oh, shit, yeah. Oh, um, shit, yeah. Oh, shit, yeah. Hammer, uh, Sandover T-shirt. Oh, website. shit, yeah. That's all at backchatstudios.com.au. You're right. Go get in the car. Go. To, I'll, I'll see you in Geelong. I've got to figure out how to get there. Is it easy? Oh, man, you'll figure it out, mate. You're a big boy. Uber, train. They're little ferry now, actually. You can get a boat. All right. I'm getting on a boat. Look what I have, mate. This is just a weird sort of area. Look at this life. Like, yeah. What's going on in here? Oh, look at that. Wow, we. Okay. <laughs> Bye, back chat. Bye, Dan. Right. See you, mate. Go to the pies. Fleet Network, if, if, you, if you don't know already and you would like to know, it'll save you money, uh, it'll help your budget, and you can get things. one of the cars that you want to get and drive around. I don't like cars. I just need somewhere to get from point A to point B. Fleet Network can do that for you while saving you money if you are employed by anybody. Yep. That is a qualification you need. You need to be an employee. 
I'm one of those. You could be an employer and it could help you. But yep. employees, you go to Fleet Network, they sort your shit out, and then you get yourself a car, you a brand new one. Yeah, you know, Ted yourself a lease and, and you're you, away. You literally, you just give it over to Frank and the boys. They handle it everything, with your employer. Everything. There's it's apps. Great. You put expenses through there. They pay you back your money. It's all inclusive. You pay one fee for the month. <sighs> Uh, so, I don't know. You get down there, you get yourself an Isuzu um, car that I've got. It's fucking great. The D-Max. Like, yeah, the D-Max, Isuzu D-Max. You go, all right, here's your Isuzu D-Max. They say, here's the amount of money you need to pay a month. That's all we heard from you. That's all she wrote. There's the money. Drive away, there's no more car. to pay. Shit, shit. Well, there's some to pay. There's obviously more to pay. It's an ongoing lease. That's the whole point. <laughs> you know what, though? Last week, mm. I got Drive my- Drive away, no more to pay until next month. <laughs> yeah. to pay again. I got my car service. So idiot. I'm not with Fleet Network, <laughs> yeah. Network right now. And I'm Just working towards getting a fleet service. Yes. Mm. When I got my car service, I, had, I dropped it off to all that stuff. The guy was showing me all these forms. I was like, oh, how much am I going to pay? pay? He's like, do you want the extra $45? Yeah. The oil thing. I was yeah. like, man, I don't know anything yeah. about this. I should just be with Just bundle network. it all in one cost exactly. and give it to me. But yeah, pay this. you got to pay this. So, how you send some money here? Lesson learned. Idiot, lesson dude. learned. I'm going to call Frank and the boys. Fleetnetwork.com.au to choose your next vehicle and leave the rest to their dedicated team of experts. Yes, we are back and uh, looking forward to wrapping up what's been a huge week of grand finals, the AFL, the NRL, but let's uh, jump into this, of course. Shelter Footy Cast, live from the Back Chat Studios, and a warm welcome to our Back Chat listeners as part of what's a huge weekend, as I say, of footy and so much to talk about. Uh, Skeeter and Hammer, Sandover medalist extraordinaire, joining you. Uh, socials at Shelter Footy Cast, Footy Cast at shelterbrewing.com.au. Of course, the YouTube Back Chat Shelter Footy Cast playlist. We're going to run through our Thirsty Camel Clanger of the Week. Don't run out of your favourites. Grab your shelters at Thirsty Camel. And, of course, as we said, welcome to our Back Chat listeners for what uh, is going to be a fascinating time with uh, Skeeter and the Sandover medalist. Hello, Hammer. Skate, good to be here. What a weekend of football it was. My goodness. Still a little bit hungover, but feeling okay. No, I could be honest. <laughs> my brain just fractionally fried yeah, after three days right. in Melbourne. I'm yeah. working at 80% capacity, yeah, that, which that's is good okay. enough. Um, let's go through the big moments of the weekend. And in essence, how do you, now you're a lot younger than me, but how many grand finals have you seen that have been as good as what we witnessed? Uh, well, I, 18 was obviously 18 dramatic. Was, 18 was phenomenal. Um, 21 for me was exceptional, obviously. Yes. Um, <clears throat> and then like the drawn grand final in 2010 was- Yeah, I've got that down. Was excellent. 2012 was pretty good. Sydney Hawthorne. Yeah, that was really good. The Bulldogs won 2016 was good just for the story, not as yeah. good of a game. Um, and going back before you probably, yeah, it would have been I before just, you I reckon I can, my, the first grand final I can remember was the Port Adelaide Brisbane grand final. So that wasn't as good. But, 27. Um, no, Port Adelaide oh, Brisbane. Oh, oh, that was, oh, four, that was sorry. the first one that I can remember. Yes. Um, the second West Coast Sydney one was very, yeah. very good. They, they were tight, low scoring yeah. games. But I guess you have to go back to 1989 yeah. when you yeah, had the classic between Hawthorne and Geelong. But, mm. It had everything. It was as good a game as I've seen in a long, long time. Skills were phenomenal from the outset. No one blew it. I think, what was it? T two goals yeah. at start was the biggest lead of the game almost. It was 12 to zip at one point. I think that's as big a lead as there was all game. And it just was back and forth and back and forth. And all the big players stood up with the exception of a couple. But it was, um, for the most part, guns firing on all cylinders. And it ended up being a bit of a shootout. Everyone thought it was going to be pretty low scoring. But um, 90 to 86, bloody good game. Did you think that... <clears throat> Brisbane handled the occasion um, pretty well. I mean, given they conceded the first two goals, but Collingwood's always a side. It feels like that they give you a, give you chances and give you given they you know they've won three finals this this campaign by a total margin yeah. of twelve points. Yeah, I always thought it was going to be a tight game. I thought Collingwood might jump them early and then it, it get reeled back, but. They, um, I thought Brisbane handled themselves really well. I thought Lockie Neal was probably the only one that didn't really have his best performance, but <clears throat> Coleman stood up in the first half. Mm. was phenomenal. The big, the, the guns down forward, I thought got Joe going. was good. Joe was good, and I thought they were good across the oval and um, and gave themselves a real look. Dunkley was Dunkley played well, so they gave themselves a chance. I, I don't, I don't, th I don't think they buckled to the pressure at all but it has just been phenomenal how Collingwood keep coming up and winning these close games and it shits me to tears but they were um <laughs> they were the best team of the year and probably deserve to get over the line absolutely um now Bobby Hill what he did in the first half can you look I was there but I was watching from a vantage point that was in between people and I was standing having a drink having a shelter who played on him 
I, I honestly couldn't tell you who played on him. I, I couldn't tell you who played on him. He was everywhere. It almost was like no one was on him. Was Stasevic go for a little while? went to him for a little bit, but he was so quick and running around all over the place that he got so f he got free on a number of occasions. He could have kicked seven on the day. Yeah. He missed two that he probably would have taken back and kicked another. Um, and then he had that late one to Pendlebury where he just wasn't even looking and then just laced him out, which was a, almost the best kick of the day. Yeah. But he was everywhere. To have four goals in a grand final and 18 touches of the footy, he was unanimously the North Smith medalist, which was uh, – I think he ended up being the unanimous North Smith medalist. Yeah, five, uh, five judges, off. and yeah. they all went uh, 15 Bobby votes yeah. to Bobby. Uh, yeah. Kitty Coleman uh, yeah. was five, five. five. 18 disposals, four goals, no, nine score involvements to Bobby. Uh, so so yeah. it was really no question – No, it was no question. – that he was the, the best on the ground. Well, certainly set up their, their buffer, but yeah. – you know, they tried. They went down. They were down by thirteen points midway through that second quarter, um, but at three quarter time, what, did you did you have a feeling that Brisbane were going to Collingwood, given their history, were going to be able to, to, to yeah. continue that? I, I was I was desperate for Brisbane to win, but I did go into the third. Like at three quarter time, I'm sitting there thinking, "There's just they're going to somehow Collingwood are going to win this. Find game. a way. They're going to find a way to win it. Even when Brisbane hit the front late, I said they're still going to find a way to win it. They're going to find a way to win it, and then." Side bottom goes bang to go. He goes bang, and they um yeah they they find a way to win it. Yeah, and look, they they go to the last five minutes, as you say, they kick a late goal. Then I think Joey Danaher scores yep. a goal with um, ninety seconds yeah, remaining thereabouts. There thereabouts. Yep. Talk us through. I guess you mightn't classify it as as a clanger, but certainly a big moment of the weekend was the free kick to Lockie Neal. But the lack of uh, adv advantage. the advantage was paid, but the lack of awareness or uh, either Barry, I think it was Barry, was it? Yeah, couldn't hear, and mm -hmm. that was the word. That he could not hear the whistle blowing. Yeah, there was a hundred thousand screaming as loud as they can. That would have been an awfully difficult one to hear. But it just like that's I can't even remember the time of the game that was. But that's going. Well, inside. that's 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 the last almost yeah. the last throw of the dice. Yeah, last you're going inside fifty. You're giving your tools a chance. Joe's been playing well. Hipwood hadn't done a whole lot, but would have been there, and Cameron would have been on the floor. So it would have been for a spectator. You would have loved to have seen it get in the goal square because that would that's where it would have gone. It would have gone top of the goal square. There would have been. 80, play, 80, yeah. 80 players <laughs> jump up every single every player on the planet would have been in there and there would have been you know someone might have bobbed up and kicked one and it would have at least been a, a bit tighter but it would have been yeah uh, you can't blame him for it he had you know that 50 meter penalty as well which was um which was an awfully big price to pay which side bottom made it uh, made it really stick but it was Oh, I would love to have seen it go inside 50 definitely yeah but that being said like uh, Colin you can't blame him you, Hundred thousand can't hear, and, and given Collingwood's defence now, just mm. quickly going big story early in the game. Murphy subbed out yep. with a concussion, which apparently passed a test, but ruled himself out, which seems yep. a little he's unusual. Had, he's had a few growing up. He, um, I played cricket with him and footy against him as a junior, and he's had an awfully he's had a few concussions going through so, uh, through his career. So I thought yeah, I didn't know that he had um, ruled himself out, but yeah, he. You know, he's still a premiership medalist at the end of the day, so I'm sure he's happy with it. Absolutely. Uh, so he goes off the ground. I thought that was Brisbane's real chance defensively because it yep. meant Moore had to obviously potentially change his, uh, the way he went about things. But um, So they lose him. The name that gets thrown up is the one, you go, Cameron Mooney had one possession in a grand final. Yep. Now they're throwing you know, Billy Frampton under the bus. <laughs> he doesn't uh, care. He doesn't give a rat. But he, <laughs> he had some chances. I know his yep. role was to nullify Harris Andrews. But he didn't take those chances, unfortunately, for him. No, he didn't. Um, he gets brought in to do a job and doesn't do it. But at the end of the day, I mean, you still walk off with a premiership. So he he, he won't be too worried. Um, yeah, he'll be a, the butt of a few jokes around the next couple of weeks with the boys, and that'll be fine. But, um, yeah, he, he had a couple of chances that didn't take. Harris Andrews was pretty good on the mm. day, and he's an All-Australian defender. He's um, one of the best fullbacks in the comp, so you can't – you know, you can't knock uh, Billy for not getting that job done. But, um, yeah, two touches is two touches, but you still have a premiership medal around your neck. So, well done, Billy. Yeah, got us covered. The boy from South Fremantle originally, uh, from one guy that uh, didn't get much of it to one who did, Nick Dacos, uh, 29 disposals, <laughs> the first goal of the game. It's funny when you're standing in the outer and you do hit, there's a lot of, um, obviously the Collingwood fans love him, but there's a lot of footy fans that uh, think that he's uh, protected species. Now that's that's yeah. just that's just punters being, you know, <clears throat> yeah. being a bit jealous of, of what he does. But um, 
he, he stood up with you know a, another great performance. He oh, the protected species thing is because he's very good at you know manipulating his body to get those high free kicks, and that's the first one of a grand final, so that's going to stand out. Yeah. So that's um, was it. I, a free, did you think it was a free? Yeah, kick? Yeah, definitely got yep. him high. And okay. he, you know, I don't mind the way he moved his body into it, and it's you know it's a free kick, so unlucky, and he goes back and kicks it. But for a bloke to play his second game back as a twenty what is he twenty year old player. Second game in eight weeks to go out and have twenty nine and a goal on grand final day is a pretty remarkable effort. He was, he was very very good in tight. He was clean. He was his hands were sharp, and he just didn't look overawed by the situation at all. Everything that had been going on for him this week and the Brownlow Medal and uh, his knee and his the whole family thing and mm. everything that the Dacos was representing on the day, he stood up and um, and he really took made the most of it and, and showed why if he had played the you know the back six weeks of the year he, he went to Brown the Brown the medalist so he's the best player in the comp at the moment and um, yeah he stood up and played bloody well. His old man mentioned in the rooms afterwards that he probably shouldn't even have been playing given mm. the, the severity of the injury but um, and he he watched obviously sat in the rooms uh, pre game and, and watched some of the I think it might have been Cyril. Uh, some of his great moments as well. Some of the, the Collingwood boys got in there and just watched some vision two hours before. Um, Kitty Coleman, uh, Brisbane, 26 disposals, um, six tackles. That left foot, look, he didn't hit all his targets. No, no, he looked to break the lines though, which is what they needed. Um, yeah, I mean, for a bloke that he's come out and just went bang last week, everyone thought, oh, surely Collingwood would have put a bit of work into him and he had 18 in the first half or something. Mm. So he, he got going early, which gave them a sniff. Um, he was dangerous, yeah. He didn't miss all his targets, but the way he the way he moves the football and the way he breaks lines is damaging for any any defence. So he goes and really got the ball going forward, gave him a couple of really good looks, and um, I think with the exception of Dacos, he went in as the leading possession getter at halftime and was uh, was nullified a little bit in the second half, but um, no, he was another one that was bloody good and, and lived up to the, the expectation that was going into him on the day. Absolutely. And and so there was expectations on, on guys like, like him, Joey Danaher, who... Let's be honest, we thought he could either tear it up or, or yep. stink it up. Um, and Charlie Cameron to kick 1-3 the week before. It took a while to get into the game, but I think both those players probably get a tick. Yeah, I, I think so. Um, I thought Joe was really good. I mean, he probably, we did thought he would tear it up or stink it up, and he probably sat just in the middle a little bit more towards the better. Um, but he was he was really good on the day, mm. and I thought Charlie took a little bit to get going, you're right. And um, But then in that second half, he looked as damaging, as he looked as dangerous as anyone on the ground. I think probably looked up the other end and thought Bobby Hill was doing it better than him, so he uh, he turned it on a little bit. But, yeah, he th- both of those guys were um, were the two cogs that got going for their forwards. Eric Kippert was a little bit off, a little bit down, but you can't all have you can't have everyone singing on all, at all the time. But the two of those guys, um, yeah, oh, I thought they would have probably got a tick after the game. Absolutely, as with Tom Mitchell, uh, game high, 13 tackles, 20 full disposals. Not like bad for a bloke that, I mean, it's a Brownlow medalist, but um, <coughs> doesn't get across the ground so quickly. It was 27, 28 degrees. But you talk of pickups, and and it's worked perfectly for Collingwood. What he's brought to the table, yeah, absolutely. He's uh, he, he has come into a team and hasn't needed to be the guy that goes and gets forty possessions every week. So I think he's changed his body shape a little bit, and his body uh, and his, his style of football. He's getting a lot of contested possessions, and he's a real in and under and hard nut at the contest, which is probably what they need at the moment. So you can release guys like Dacos, you can give Pendlebury the time and space that he needs, and it's um. Yeah, he, he's been a massive pickup for them and has really, you know, obviously, win yourself a premiership medal. But he was excellent on the day, I thought. And you look at the end of it. Oh, I looked at the stats afterwards and said, oh, he's had 13 tackles and 24 touches because you don't really see him because he's all does his work in such a tight area. And um, no, I thought he was excellent on the day as well. Absolutely. Before we go and recap what our selections were for the weekend, um, after every grand final, I remember Scully was very buoyant sitting in this chair in March saying that Geelong are going to go back to back and, yep. and do it all again. <laughs> we know how hard that is. Oh, yeah. Does so. Collingwood have the the makeup and the players and the style of footy to, to do that? I mean, it's, you know, you're winning by, by yeah. margins that are so small. Do you see them as a the old dynasty type? Set up for the for, for in the AFL, or is it just too hard to, to do that in the modern? I degree? think it's very hard to do that. I said last year at the start of this year, I said Collingwood would be the team that uh, that fell off the perch because I didn't I didn't think they'd be able to win all these close ones again, and they've gone out and done it. Um, as to whether or not it's they they sort of go back to back and build a dynasty, it's just so it is so mm. hard. You've got so many good teams that have underperformed. The Bulldogs underperformed this year. Melbourne underperformed this year. Geelong underperformed this year. You've got team Sydney probably underperformed for their you know finishing in a grand final last year. So there's a lot of teams that have got star-studded lineups that are just ready to attack and run at it. And I think for a team that's that's built itself on winning these close games, they've given themselves every chance to sort of create something. But um, oh, it's, to say they're going to go back-to-back or they're going to build something is too hard because it's just so 
That was just Siri having a chat to me. I'm not Siri sure. doesn't like it. Siri well, and I no, both think Collingwood aren't going to go back to back. No, no. But what I, what I will say is, and I don't know how to shut that up, by the way, Jade, and I have to work that out at some stage. Uh, <laughs> he's in a scully, be pissing himself <laughs> right now. Um, uh, Collingwood aren't going to lose too many. No, not going to lose. Yeah. Uh, uh, Scotty Pendlebury and still side bottom, 2010 games, yep. and 2023. Scotty's last quarter, enormous. We mentioned side bottom's goal. I don't see just off the top of my head. Maybe I'm wrong. Is there any retire? Is, is anyone going to bow out? I don't think anyone's going to bow out. The Pendlebury and Sidebottom are both signed on for another year, yeah. so I don't think they get any worse. Which is you know tough to say to the Premiership team. So yeah, they um they were going to be hard to beat next year. They were hard to beat this year, and I didn't think they would be, and they were. So I'm not going to say anything negative about mm. them anymore. Although I wish the Lions won. <laughs> well, speaking of the Lions, uh, before we um, wrap up this segment. What do they need to do next year? Obviously, kick one more goal in the grand final. But they, I think what we've seen for in the final, um, grand final, we saw them against, even though they got beaten by Melbourne during the year. Yeah. I think what they need to do, I think, is get some more access to the bloody MCG, yeah, as most I interstate so. clubs need. <clears throat> yeah, I, I, th- I agree. I think you've sort of knocked the, knocked the can they play at the G thing this year. They've dominated games at the Gabba, obviously, and that's going to be their fortress for as long as they want to be good. But... Their access to the G is, is paramount to them being a successful team in September. And I think you've come there and they've probably wiped away the hoodoo because they've come pretty close to winning a grand final. Yep. So they just got to get more games at the G. And I think they're going to be you – know, they're another team that's not going to get any worse next year. They've got a couple of retirees, but they didn't really have too much impact on this year. And they're going to have – you know they're going to have draft picks. They're going to have players that are coming up, and they're going to only, they're going to have players that only get better. So I mean Ashcroft returns. I'm not sure yeah, when, but obviously he'll come back midway through the talent. year. So and you know, Coleman gets better, and uh, Danaher and Hipwood and, and Cameron have another year of playing together. So they're all going to get better, um, and they're still going to win all the you know they might not win all their games at the Gabba, but they're going to win enough mm. in the Gabba to probably push for top four. So. That's that's their thing. I think they've just got to have another crack at it. I don't think anyone now can say that they're a team that chokes in finals because yes, they lost, but they threw the really had a real throw at the stumps. And um, you know, I think they'll be back and just as good next year. Yep. Uh, well done to uh, Chris Fagan and the Lions, but also uh, congratulations to Craig McRae, whose wife gave birth on the morning of the match. And I don't know if she went to the ground at all. Surely not. You I'm can't not be- sure, but she know, you know they named their daughter Maggie. Yes, I did hear named that. Their daughter Maggie, which was pretty cool. The other thing that I heard about Craig McRae is that he told the Collingwood list that in I think it might have been one of the one of the three grand finals that he won yep. that they had this thing Brisbane where they would always touch the cup last. So wherever, whenever it was a joint thing that both would hold the With cup. With two captains. Two captains mm-hmm. had to hold the cup. Darcy Moore always grabbed it last. And then when Matthews and um, Peter Moore walked out, <laughs> he grabbed it last too. And you see them w- wetting themselves as they're lining up before the grand fi- uh, before the um, national anthem. So they uh, they got a little bit of that. It was a little mental game for uh, for the for the boys, I think. But a uh, nice little tidbit there from Craig. Yeah, no, he's, uh, he's been a ripper, hasn't he, in the crowds yesterday yep. um, at their <clears> home base. And... Gee whiz, they, they some, I'll be honest with you, they are very passionate, but there's some uh, absolute ferals who barrack for Collingwood, I can tell you oh, first, yeah, yeah, no <laughs> first hand, they are off chops. And when the yeah. siren went and I was down in the second lower tier and, uh, yeah, it was uh, it was an explosion of emotion. Um, sure, would have been. Uh, well done to Collingwood. Uh, that is uh, our big moments of the round. This is Skeet and the Sandover medalist. Uh, let's jump into our thirsty camel clanger of the week. Uh, have you found one from the grand final hammer, or are you sort of having to having yeah. to go to I, another area? I've, I mean, this is probably. I mean, I've had a go at the AFL a few times here, so I'm going to. You've got to be very careful. I do have to be very careful. I think my clanger of the week is whoever's decision it was to make Brisbane rock up the next day, and the, the Brisbane players had to go and thank the uh, oh, the, the Fitzroy non, fans. The Fitzroy fans. Imagine that you've lost a grand final by four points, and you've had to front up the next day. I would have been like, oh. I think the players would have been absolutely devastated with the fact they had to do that. Fly home and do it to the Brisbane fans, sure, but far out, 24 hours, 12 hours after the fact, that hurts. Well, they were, the, they were in the, at the airport yesterday when we were flying back, and uh, look, they were, they were fine. Chris Fagan looked, um, you know, they, they were all pretty. I mean, you can't do much 24 hours after the event. No, you can't do. But uh, that's, I mean, it's probably not a claim because you do need to thank them. I think for me, on grand final day, there wasn't a whole lot that went wrong. The no. Big, the only one for me would be the Jared Berry. 50 that's free, that's 50 where I was heading. Um, but and I, I looked at the social media, and I th- would have thought that the umpires had absolute howlers. I, you watch on a TV, yeah. bit, bit better viewing than I had. I didn't notice 
that much that was wrong. But can no. you tell me? Tell I, me I, I, I completely agree. I thought the umpires did an excellent job. And I think for me, as, an, as a spectator watching, obviously at the ground, you can get caught up in the whole rigmarole oh. of everyone yelling ball and everyone yelling at the umps, and especially with Collingwood fans. But the, um, the when you're watching it at home, for mine, the, the the hallmark of a good umpiring performance is when you just don't notice them at all. And I didn't. I had no no notice of the umpires, with the exception of Matt Stevick, who used to be a math teacher for my cousin at Melbourne Grammar. Oh, so really? Uh, every- but that's and, and we've got to give him a, a, a shout yeah, out. Yeah, he was, is that eleven grand 11, font? Eleven in a row, I think. Eleven in a row. Eleven in a row. Yep. That's enormous. Yeah, Matty Stevick, uh, he a very 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 good umpire, good operator. Um, but yeah, I didn't think that. I thought they were fan. I thought they were fine. Didn't see, notice them at all. Um, but yeah, the big clanger for me was the Jared Berry fifty that resulted in side bottom nailing that one from fifty five. The clanger from Berry, they're not the umpire. No, the clanger what, from Berry. He, that, he didn't need to do it. There was a clanger from the umpires, which I, I thought possibly was uh, it was caught holding the ball. It might have even been Berry, but it was taken over the shoulder. Maynard won the free kick. Was caught holding the ball. Um, but you're right. I think we're going to go Thirsty Camel Clang of the Week to, to the umpires for the, the advantage, which wasn't really an advantage. Yep. But we're not giving him a full-blown whack because nah, I thought I reckon they were okay. Yeah, I don't think you can. I mean, yes, that's going to be scrutinised a little bit, but that's in the heat of the moment as well, just as much as it is for the bloke taking advantage. So it's yeah. pretty stiff on their part. I agree. Don't run out of your favourites. Grab your shelters at Thirsty Camel. Great to have them on board in 2023. Why are we mentioning grand finals? Now, you may not be as much into the NRL, but oh, I, I was Yep, I was having a few shelters last night yeah. watching it. Well, I just got home from the airport to watch the last 10 minutes, but it was 8-6. <laughs> oh, what a game. Penrith yep. at half time. Brisbane score the next three tries. Or three two, tries, yeah. yeah. So they're 24 to, to 8. 24 to 8. We had yeah. 56 minutes. A bloke called Nathan, Nathan Cleary. Nathan Cleary just goes bang. And just, just slices went, them up. Bang. Yeah, he was, uh, yeah. Did he? When did he win the Dal? He won the. Um, Wasn't Dalian this year? That went no, to that uh, Caelan Ponga. Ponga. He won it last year or the year before. Oh, he would have won. He's a Dalian. He's twenty five years yeah. of age. He's won three premierships. Yeah, he probably hasn't stood up in state of origins as much as you think he would. He but last was night, excellent last night. Last he? night, I mean, again, I, I didn't get to catch him, hardly any of the game. But did Brisbane choke? Yeah, I think they they had a couple of chances to lock it in their front half, and they stepped some had some tackle stepped, and they broke some lines, and there was look they played. Penrith played well in the last 10 minutes. I'm not a massive rugby fan. I don't really tune into it unless there's a big game on. Rugby, they call it rugby watch. league, by the way. Rugby, they call it rugby league. In real, yeah, they don't call it rugby. Rugby's See, that's game. how much of a fan I am. <laughs> it's Royal Cups on the other yeah, side of the world. Go. I don't tune into any form of rugby, that is, unless Aussie's playing. But unless it's State of Origin or uh, NRL Grand Final, I don't really pay much attention. And um, But, yeah, I could sit back and appreciate what was going on. It was a bloody good brand of uh, of NRL. Did you appreciate the pre-game entertainment compare, Kiss? Because I, oh, I saw Kiss, and I'm a bit of a Kiss excellent. fan. I love Kiss. I just thought they were super. Oh, Kiss and were awesome. They were just burning. I was just, you know, I wish they'd played one more song. They were excellent. They got going there late. Yeah, so, you, so you actually different I, generation. I loved them. I thought it was awesome. Yeah, oh, good. I, I would have loved to have been there. Because I said to Sky, mate, they'll be they'll be terrific. And he was sort of, ah, I'm an R. And I said, mate, Crowded House, as good as they are, this is a, a band that gives the energy to the crowd. Yeah, they certainly got me up at about more than uh, Hunters and Collectors at half time. But um, oh, it wasn't actually Hunters and Collectors, wasn't it? It was their, half lead, to- uh, it was their lead singer. Mark Seymour. And, yeah, and, and co. But uh, Kiss were phenomenal. And I didn't see the Tina Turner uh, in Personated. Did you watch any of that? Her last one. So she was a lead into the NRL Grand Final. Anyway, they reckon she was good. Um, anyway, I was just going to Peter Ford. He, he gave them a pump up, so he's in entertainment. We're just numpty footy yeah, people. I was so a big kiss. I was happy with Kiss. Kiss was good, mate. Was I, oh, mate, I would like Shandy, but that maybe was a bit yeah. too uh, <laughs> late at night stuff. Um, once again, uh, it's Skeet, and uh, we've got the sound of a medalist. Okay, let's uh, now. I'm reading this off a rundown. And am I 100% right here? West Coast in the AFLW have beaten Port Adelaide. Yes, we have, mate. Thank you very much. <laughs> cheer, cheer, cheer. It was an almighty effort. Emma Swanson, our captain's 50th game. Um, it's a uh, – we haven't had a very good history of 50 games. We've had That's our third 50-gamer for um, AFLW in, at West Coast. We had Belinda Smith – Last year, in the last round of the year against Melbourne, I think we lost that one 77 to 1. Uh, we had Dana Hooker in round two against the Gold Coast, and we lost that one about 99 to maybe 23. Yeah. So, haven't had a good run of 50 games and, um, and needed to buck the trend for our captain this week, and we did. Thought it was an excellent game of football. Uh, we used the ball really well. We were accurate in front of goals, which is not typically our strong suit, and um, you know managed to get over the line with, uh, with by six points. So, a very, very much needed win. And what does that do for the club that's been, let's be honest, from a women's perspective, you've been kicked from pillar to post? Yeah, it uh, it certainly, 
it gives us a nice boost going into the halfway point of the year. It's the girls have got an eight day had an eight day break, so I'm sure they would have gone out and had a couple of shelters and enjoyed themselves. But it's um, yeah, it just lifts the spirits a bit. I think we've been trying to implement a game style and a, a brand of football that that works, and we just haven't been able to execute it. Um, and this was the first time we actually have. So it's good to see that the stuff that that Mick and um, the coaches are we're all trying to implement and get them to understand and this will be a good one to review because we'll be able to show them when 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 we get stuff right it's a, it's a it's a good brand of footy by the way emma swanson's podcast is out this week on back chat apparently it's a really good chat to, uh, as they break down her, her career what she's done for the footy club and what's ahead for the west coast eagles so that's uh, back chat emma swanson make sure you be part of that uh before we uh go some listener questions the wildcats played on friday they beat tasmania yep. played yesterday got uh, <clears throat> touched up by southeast melbourne who who scored, I think, 38 points in the third quarter, outscoring the Wildcats by 26, mm. which is some sort of record. But um, Cats one and one early days. Early days. I, I see, I'm trying to get into the NBL a bit more this year. Never really have been a yeah. massive fan, but I'm trying to get into it a little bit. So I'm jumping on the Cats bandwagon, obviously, being uh, being a Perth man. But it's uh, it's early doors. I'm excited to see what's happening, but I'm trying to get on board as much as well, I can. I'll just give a cut to you, cool. I'm sure he'll look after you with a couple mm. of corporates at the uh, ROC <laughs> Arena. By the way, the Cats take on the 36ers on Friday at RAC Arena. Skeet and the Sandover medalist. Uh, listen to questions next. Okay, this is Guy4167. Uh, finally, Skeet took our advice on dressing more casual. I don't know what that means, but uh, <laughs> you and I, we're both wearing shoes, Hammer, so that's a that's start. That's a start, yep. That's a start. Um, not sure where we can go with that, Guy, but thanks for the compliment. You are, no, you're looking good. Well, I've got to go to work. I've got to go to the footy commission. Yeah, exactly. I've been radio already. Correct. You're that, a busy man. Go home, and you know when you've been in Melbourne for three days on yep. the gas? <laughs> yep. You completely cook when you get... Yeah, correct. <laughs> and you try and tell the missus, nah, no, never better. Yeah. Never better. I'm fresh, good. Fresh <laughs> <of days. laughs> uh, this is Josh Gilby, court skater, having a punt at Crown Casino in Melbourne. Yes, well, he did. No, well, he, he, I wasn't having a punt. I had a mate who was who was, uh, I'll say, he's quite a, a wealthy individual. He was, like, punting for Australia. Nice. I was, How'd I was, he go? Uh, I don't know. I think he won 18 grand on one night and lost 15. Who knows? He was Jeepers. He was winning and losing. Anyway, um, I wasn't lady. punting on the tables, but I was having a look and maybe went into a little bar, listened to a bit of music. It was just a, just a good night. normal Melbourne good vibe, yeah. <laughs> final weekend, and we just you just wander around aimlessly at the yep. casino at one in the morning thinking, what the... Well, it's impressive the way they do it. They pump lavender through the air vents. They just have no <laughs> clocks there. The lights are always <laughs> blinking. The next minute, you, you walk in at 11.30. Next minute, it's 5 a.m. And you're thinking, where the hell has that time Where's that gone? time gone? And you get outside and you think, uh, and you're a bit, you know, you're a bit hungover. Yeah. And in Melbourne on Saturday, it was like 27 degrees. So you get stinking hot, so, bright <laughs> eyes. You yeah. try and get the, oh, the sweat goodness. glands calm yeah. down. You go on, and of course, you go and join another group of mates. And the first thing you've got to do is have a beer because yeah, that's you know, have a shelter to make sure that you're not mm-hmm. look like a soft yep. individual. Anyway, um, they're the two questions, so we can't do much more than that. Uh, We'll take a little, little sting to give us a think about who we got as our shelter, XPA, X Factor Player of the Weekend. Oh, I think it's pretty obvious, given what God. happened to the MCG, and he's from Northam, no? Yep. Couldn't be anyone else, I don't the, think. The Bobby Hill? I yeah. mean, that's 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 how... It had how, to be. Bobby that, Hill or uh, or Nathan Cleary, take the pick. Yeah, well, we're not going to give it to Nathan, who's no, seen Penrith. Bob, Bobby was phenomenal. Yeah, he was phenomenal. He's from Northern. He's yeah, a good, WA good, boy. Good pick. Good yeah, on him. Well played him, by the way. Just in a nutshell, uh, he has had cancer, I think, 12 months ago, testicular cancer. Yep. Um, wanted to go to Essendon yep. as part of a trade going back a bit. <laughs> yeah. That didn't transform. Thank goodness. <laughs> Just talk about a sliding door moment. Yeah, my goodness. And then, uh, of course, left the Giants. Um, he's from Northam, as I said, and his cousins, Stephen and uh, Brad. Yep. I think Brad was in the rooms after the yep. game. So Bobby Hill, deservedly a shelter XPA yeah. X Factor. It's just, you couldn't go anywhere. The only other one I think you can argue, and hear me out on this, didn't have these greatest game. To come from the clouds the way Billy Frampton has oh, done yeah. and get a get premiership a medal around your neck. Height, like that's a story. How, did he, how many games did he play this year? Not many. Not many. He's come from the clouds and he's walking off the MCG with a premiership medal. Bobby Hill was way better, but I'll tell you what, he, <laughs> Billy Frampton's my X Factor player of the round. Billy, Billy, <laughs> Billy. Uh, now, well, just one quick one before we uh, yes. wrap it up. I'd like to get your opinion. You talk about Billy getting a medal. Yep. Do you have any sympathy or not sympathy? Do you have uh, a theory that they should, as in a Taylor Adams or a Dan McStay, for instance, who played the bulk of the year, deserve a medal at the end of the grand final. No, 
They don't. They. Uh, it's a really brutal way to go, and it's. They were in tears after the game, and they were, you know, inconsolable. And John Noble was the same. But mm. that's the way it goes. You, you don't play in the grand final. You don't. You're not a premiership player, and it's as, as much as the clubs will try and say that it's a team effort and everyone gets there. You, you'll all know that you, who played and who didn't, and um, you know it's that's what's got to drive and keep the, the fire alive to go again. But um, no, I, I don't think there should be um, sympathy awards handed out for guys who play most of the year and miss. It's it's an unfortunate reality of the game, and I remember at grand final day in 2018, Eric McKenzie was there, mm. and he was it was the similar thing, and he was. Well, where do you stop? I mean, to be on the, go back to 18. I mean, obviously Brad Shepherd <coughs> des- deserved one. Nick Natanui played that year. I mean, how many yeah. medals do you give? Yeah. Is it 35? Yeah, there? that's the, there's, there's 40 odd on the list or something. I that's why it, 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 you can't. It's got to be you play in the game, you win a medal. Other, yeah. other than that, it's stiff. Hundred uh, percent. Big show, lots to recap. Thanks to uh, our friends at Shelter Footycast. You can email us at footycast at shelterbrewing.com.au at shelterfootycast on Instagram. <clears throat> and after a big weekend in Melbourne, the voice just <laughs> starting to wander a bit, Hammer. Socials at Shelter Footycast on Instagram. At the YouTube search, the back channel, Shelter Footycast Place. Nice work to the Sandover medalist. Skeet uh, saying to Scoey and the family in Melbourne, uh, have one for Jace today, boys and girls, and uh, our thoughts are with you. See you back here Thursday. 